Casper, friends forever. Casper, friends forever. Adapted by Marie T. Morreale from the movie Casper. Dr. Harvey, a ghost hunter, and his 12-year-old daughter, Kat, were traveling across the country from New Mexico to Maine. Dr. Harvey had been hired to chase away ghosts from Whipstaff Mansion, and he was excited about the job. But Kat was upset because they were moving for the ninth time in two years, and she had to leave her friends behind. Don't worry, Kat, said Dr. Harvey. I promise this will be the last time we move. I'm sure you'll make new friends. Finally, Dr. Harvey and Kat arrived in Maine. They drove up the long winding road to the haunted mansion. It's not so bad, said Dr. Harvey when he saw the spooky old place. I guess not, if you're the star of a horror movie, answered Kat. Whipstaff Mansion was huge. Kat ran upstairs to choose a bedroom. Many of the rooms were too scary. Then she opened the door of a cheery little room. It was perfect. Kat didn't know the room was already occupied by Casper, a friendly ghost. That night, as Kat got ready for bed, Casper tried to introduce himself without scaring her. He wanted to be her friend. To get closer to Kat, Casper changed into her pillow. But just before Kat lay her head down on the Casper pillow, she fluffed it up. Ow! Casper squeaked. Startled, Kat turned to see Casper floating in the air. A ghost! Kat screamed. Casper was so scared he hid in the closet. As Dr. Harvey rushed into the bedroom, Kat pointed to the closet door. Bravely, Dr. Harvey opened it. Pleased to meet you, sir. My name is Casper, said the ghost as he reached out to shake Dr. Harvey's hand. In the morning, Casper surprised Dr. Harvey and Kat. He had prepared a wonderful breakfast for them. Orange juice, Casper asked Kat. Thank you, Kat said, taking the floating glass. In the daylight, the little ghost didn't seem so scary. Suddenly, the mansion started to rumble. Three ghosts swooped into the kitchen and began to gobble up all the food. Uh, these are my uncles, Stretch, Fatso, and Stinky, said Casper. They're also called the ghostly trio. He was embarrassed by his uncle's bad behavior. Soon it was time for Cat to leave for school. Make friends, sweetie, Dr. Harvey told Cat and kissed her goodbye. Cat was nervous about being the new kid in class once again. As she walked slowly along, she saw a cute boy and a girl riding bikes. The boy turned and smiled at Kat. Maybe this town won't be so bad after all, she thought. What Kat didn't see was the mean look the girl gave her. She didn't like it when the boy smiled at Kat. Hurry up, Vic, or we'll be late, the girl called as she pedaled faster. Wait up, Amber, he answered, trying to keep up with her. When Kat arrived at school, the teacher introduced her to the seventh grade class. Kat recognized Vic and Amber right away. Kat just moved into the old Whipstaff mansion, said the teacher. It's haunted. That would be a cool place to have our class Halloween party, one student suggested. Kat said yes, hoping Vic would come. When Kat got home that afternoon, the doorbell rang. It was Vic. He had come to ask Kat to be his date for the Halloween party. Kat happily agreed, but Casper wasn't thrilled about Kat's friendship with Vic. The little ghost wished he could go to the party with Kat. As Vic left Whipstaff, he found Amber waiting outside the front gates. The date was a trick Amber had cooked up because she was jealous of Kat. Her plan was to embarrass Kat the night of the party. She actually bought it, Amber asked Vic. 
Then she added meanly, Happy Halloween, Cat Harvey. Meanwhile, Casper tried to convince Cat to let him take her to the party. First, he turned up in Cat's music box, twirling away to the tune. See, I'm a good dancer, Casper said. When Cat opened her dresser, there was Casper folded like a shirt. I don't even need a costume, he said. Next, he turned into a party balloon. Finally, Casper changed into Casper Man, the ghostly superhero. But even that trick didn't impress Cat. All she could think about was Vic. At last, Halloween night arrived. Cat's classmates danced and laughed and snacked on goodies at the party. But no matter where Cat looked, she couldn't find Vic. Where is he? wondered Cat. Meanwhile, Vic and Amber had sneaked into the mansion and were hiding in the library. Dressed as a giant ghost with Amber standing on Vic's shoulders, the two planned to appear suddenly at the party as the ghost of Whipstaff Mansion and scare everyone away. But as Amber and Vic peered into a mirror to see how they looked, the ghostly trio stared back at them. Eek! Amber and Vic screamed and ran out the front door. The trick had backfired. Everyone laughed except Kat. She didn't have a best friend to share the joke with. Upstairs, Casper heard the laughter echoing from the party. I wish I were a real boy, he whispered. Suddenly, Casper was not alone. A beautiful angel appeared and said, I will grant your wish, but only until 10 o'clock tonight. Then you will become a ghost again. The angel transformed Casper into a real boy dressed in a pirate costume. Casper practically flew down the stairs to find Cat. Everyone at the party wondered who this mystery boy was. When he saw Kat standing alone, he walked over to her and asked, May I have this dance? Something about the pirate boy's voice sounded familiar to Kat. Casper, is that you? She whispered happily. Kat and Casper danced and danced. But when the clock struck 10 o'clock, Casper began to change back into a little ghost. Before it was too late, he wanted Cat to know he would never forget their magic night together. I'll always be your best friend, Casper whispered to Cat. Friends forever, answered Cat. The end.